you know you have the same number of bones in your neck as a giraffe? Those are just bigger. But all bones need looking after. Cycling in the park. Brilliant exercise and a brilliant way to get some sunshine. But of course, cycling can also be dangerous. You could cycle into a hedge and hit your head. That's why I'm wearing this snazzy helmet. Or you could fall off and get a nasty graze on your knee. That's why I'm wearing these snazzy leggings. And finally, of course, you need to make sure your bike is properly maintained. You wouldn't want to squeeze your brakes and... Uh-oh! My brakes! Oh, my brakes! Oh. oh! Well, thanks to my helmet, I don't have a head injury. Me neither, and thanks to these leggings, I haven't got any grazes. But on the downside, I think I've broken my arm. Sounds like an injury alert. So, what should you do with a broken arm? Should you A, run around the park screaming, Ah! My arm's broken! B, support it to stop it moving using your hand, some clothing or cushions. Or C, tell your teacher you won't be doing homework ever again. You guessed it. The answer is B. Here's how it's done. So, Chris, put your arm against your body gently as you can. It really hurts if I move it. And then what we can do is use Chris's jumper to support the arm itself. So if I go very gently, try not to move oh. the arm. Now remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency. Never do this on your own unless it is an emergency. Always try and find an adult. How's that? And can you now relax your arm? Yeah, that feels much better. Yeah. It's more comfortable, isn't it? So once he's feeling better, we can get him to hospital. He's going to be more comfortable when he's moving. We can get him x-rayed and see what's going on. So now it's this lot's turn to have a go. Ow! Ow! That's really good. So try and be very gentle with that arm. How's that feeling? Can you relax that arm now? Feels yeah. pretty good? Yeah, it feels a little better. So obviously, for most of the time when you've got a broken arm, you don't need to call an ambulance. You can get in a car and go to any of yourself. So, if you think you might have broken your arm, support it to stop it moving using your hand or clothing or cushions and tell an adult or call 999. Are you sure it's broken, Chris? Better safe than sorry, Zahn. Today is a very exciting day for me and Dr Zahn because we're having our... ..birthday party! As you can see, having a birthday party can be dangerous. You could burn yourself while you're baking the cake. Not if you wear oven gloves or you buy it from the shop. Well, you could poke someone in the eye with the end of your party hat. Not if you're as careful as I am. Or you could slip on the freshly washed floor whilst practising your dance moves. Right, Zahn, come on, we've got to lay out the food for the guests. Ooh, don't mind if I do. And remember, don't eat anything from the bowl on the left. It's got peanuts in it, and you can't eat peanuts! Zahn, this could cause a severe allergic reaction. Injury alert! <laughs> now, what should you do if someone was having a serious allergic reaction? A, help them use their EpiPen or auto-injector pen and call 999. B. Sing them a lullaby to help them feel calm. Or C. Film them and put it on the internet. It might go viral. The correct answer is A. Help them use their EpiPen or auto-injector pen and call 999. Let's see if this lot get it right without any help from us. Right, off you go! Ruby and Jesse are both pretending that they're having an allergic reaction. Quick, they need your help. Are you right? Are you right? Both teams get straight to work. I love to see that. Have you eaten? eaten? What happened to peanuts? Wait. Quite rushed and quite panicked initially. I found this! What? They managed to find the auto-injector pen, but they're stumbling a little bit with reading instructions properly. Our teams didn't quite get this right. They had some good ideas. Nine, nine, nine. But also a few dodgy ones. Did you follow the instructions? Oh, yeah. 
Right, let's go and find out the correct way to deal with a severe allergic reaction. Come on. Remember, this is what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to get an adult. We're showing you what to do using a dummy injector pen. So let's say I'm having an allergic reaction. Chris, my lips are swelling, my tongue's swelling, I'm feeling itchy in my mouth. I'm actually finding it quite hard to breathe now, and I just feel terrible. I've got your auto-injector pen here, so I'd read the instructions. Pull off blue safety cap. Hold device 10 centimetres from the outer thigh, swing and jab orange tip firmly against outer thigh and listen for the click and hold in place for 10 seconds. So that's Zahn's outer thigh, so that's about 10 centimetres. One, two, nine, ten. And then we come out and then it says massage area for 10 seconds. Different pens have different sets of instructions, so always read the instructions carefully. Once you've given the medicine, you must then call 999. Right, who wants to try it again? Me! Come on, then. Are you OK? So, if you see someone with a rash, itchiness, swelling on their face or having difficulties breathing, then it might be a severe allergic reaction and you must... Find their auto-injector pen and help them to use it following the instructions. Call 999. Hello. Ambulance. And remember to find out your location. Reassure the patient until the paramedics arrive. And if they don't have an auto-injector pen, call 999 immediately. Really good job, everyone. Zot, are you OK? Is your tongue itchy? Is your throat swelling up? I can get your auto-injector pen. I don't need my auto-injector pen. Yeah, you do. Don't be silly. I didn't eat any peanuts. Just been eating these sweets. Although, I see what you mean. They do look a bit similar. Well, that is a relief. But it's always better to check if someone needs your help. And if you have a friend or a twin brother with a severe nut allergy, it's better not to serve any nuts at all. Having a day out in the park or countryside is a brilliant way of getting some fresh air and chilling out. Especially when there's somewhere to swim! Woohoo! But pools and lakes can be dangerous. You could slip if you run on wet ground. Uh, not me. I always walk slowly and safely to the water's edge. Well, you could get into a tangle trying to change into your swimming trunks and fall over. Not if you've already come wearing your swimmers <laughs> under your clothes. Well, you could stub your toe on rocks getting into the water. Not if you use the jetty, Chris. Well, in that case, I needn't have worried. I'll just sit back and read my book. Yippee! Chris! 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 I think Zon's drowning. Yippee! This looks like an injury alert. I'd better save him. If you see someone drowning, never jump in to rescue them. Go and get an adult. Once they've been rescued from the water, should you... A. Sing them a sea shanty. B. Give them the book Learn How to Swim. Or C. Check if they're breathing and, if they are, roll them on their side, tilt their head back and call 999. The correct answer is, of course, C. Check if they're breathing and, if they are, roll them on their side, tilt their head back and call 999. Let's see if this lot get it right. They've not had any advice and they're winging it. Are you ready? Yes! Yeah! Off you go! Temiteo and Dami are both pretending that they've been rescued from a lake after they started drowning. Quick, guys, they need your help. She's breathing. Yes, yeah, she's breathing. Checking she's breathing is a great start. I'll maybe try and start doing chest compressions. They know yeah, she's like breathing that. and they're still doing chest compressions, which isn't going to do any good at all. She's going to put him on his side. They put him on his side, which is good, but they didn't check anything first. How do you get water off someone? They haven't worked out if he's breathing or not. Our teams didn't quite get this right. They had some good ideas. I put him into the rescue position. And a few dodgy ones. Mirabelle, why did you start doing chest compression? Just so that she can at least get a bit of water out of her system. So you were trying to squeeze her out like a sponge. Time to show you how it should be done. So Chris, just been pulled out of the lake, but he's not responsive. Remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to get an adult. After you've checked he's unresponsive, check that he's breathing. So I'm going to tilt his head back, his mouth open. To work out if someone's breathing, place your face close to theirs. Look, is their chest moving? Listen, 
Can you hear them breathing? And feel. Can you feel their breath on your face? And he is breathing, but he's not responsive. So the next thing I need to do is get him in a position which will keep his airway open. Get that arm up, this arm over here, this leg up, and roll him towards me. Most important bit is to tilt his head like that so that his airway is open. This also helps any water come out. And now I phone the ambulance. 999, give my location, say what's happened, say that I want an ambulance, and they'll be on their way. While you're waiting, keep checking the person is still breathing. Are you ready to have another go? Yeah! Off you go. So if you see someone who's been rescued from drowning and is unresponsive, check their breathing, and if they are, roll them onto their side, tilt their head back, and then call 999. He's breathing, but she isn't responding. If the person isn't breathing, the response is different. You must call 999 immediately and find an adult. Don't worry, Zara, I've got you. Oh, I'm not drowning. I was waving to say hello. Oh, well, always better to be safe than sorry, I say. One of our favourite hobbies is golf. And I must say, Chris, we're getting pretty good at it. But, like all outdoor sports arenas, the golf course can be a place of danger. You could forget to tie your shoelaces and trip over them. <laughs> you could hurt your back carrying my clubs around. Oof. Oof. Or you could be hit on the head by a rogue golf ball. Sand! Duck! <laughs> right, it's my turn to tee off. And just to be safe, I'm going to get well back. There's no need to go that far away. <laughs> Uh-oh, Dr Chris has collapsed and he's not responding. Injury alert! So what should you do if someone is unresponsive and not breathing? A. Take a selfie with them while they can't refuse. B. Lie down next to them and have a little nap. Or C. Call 999, find an adult and tell them how to do chest compressions and then get an AED or defibrillator. The correct answer is C. Call 999, find an adult and tell them how to do chest compressions and then get an AED or defibrillator. But will this lot get it right with no training? Are you ready? Yeah! Off you go. go! AJ and Hanitha are both pretending that they've had an accident and are unresponsive and not breathing. Quick, guys, they need your help. OK, you got a phone. No, no, no. You need to come to this. Location straight away. Well, calling an ambulance is a great start. I can't feel it. Start the compressions. One. They've got into doing chest compressions, but actually they're just squishing his stomach. They're not doing them in the right place at all. Our teams didn't quite get this right. Some ideas were spot on, like Farouk's. I searched to see if she had a phone on her so we could call the ambulance. Others just missed the mark. Tell me about the chest impressions. I don't think I did it too next to his chest. I was doing it near his stomach. Let's show you how it should be done with the help of Jeff, our first aid dummy. Right, can you see if he's responsive? Jeff? Remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to get an adult. I'm shaking him gently, but he's not saying anything. What should I do next? Can you check if he's breathing? Yep. Put your ear down next to his mouth, tilt his head back, can you feel any breaths at all on your ear? No, I can't feel any and I can't hear anything. We need to call 999. OK, I've got a phone here. So you call 999, give the patient's problem, give your location, and the ambulance service will tell you to start doing chest compressions. Put the heel of your hand in the middle of his chest and start pushing down at that speed twice every second. To do chest compressions, you need a grown-up because it's hard work and requires the stronger power of an adult for it to be effective. So Chris is now doing chest compressions. I need to go and find an AED or defibrillator. An AED, or Automated External Defibrillator, can be spotted in schools and public places like sports centres. Now, all AEDs have instructions on them. It's a machine which delivers an electric shock to the heart. Pull green tab to remove pads. There are the pads. Peel pads from liner. Press pads firmly to patient's bare skin. 
Okay, and now you need to move back because I'm going to give a shock. Can you stand back? Jeff isn't responding because he's a dummy, but at the touch of a button, the defibrillator tries to give the heart a kickstart. This machine will talk you through everything you need to do, so the most important thing is to stay calm and listen to the instructions. Do you want to have a go? Yeah! Brilliant. So, if you see someone who's unresponsive and not breathing, call 999, remember you'll need to know your location, then tell an adult how to do chest compressions, and finally, if available, find a defibrillator and follow its voice prompts. Good work, guys. Chris, are you breathing? Oh, yes, I am. I just winded myself. You winded yourself? Is that it? Well, yes, but it was quite a shock at the time. I thought it was some kind of emergency. Well, it's always better to check. I wonder if we should play something else. I've got this basketball with me. OK, all right, ready? One, two, three. Oh! Winded again. 